Well, this entire thing was a complete cluster and has dramatically and should dramatically decrease much of your faith in the immediate information that was put out by the Ukrainians and by many of the NATO Baltic states, not including Poland. First and foremost was Zelensky, who seized on the immediate information or the immediate aftermath of the blast to call for increased NATO intervention into Ukraine. Let's put this up there on the screen. This is the very first statement that he made. Quote, terror is not limited to our national borders. Russian missiles hit Poland, NATO territory. This is a Russian missile attack on collective security. Security, a very significant escalation. We must act. Let's go ahead and put the next one up there. Because in a way, you can, you know, you can say, okay, Zelensky, he's always trying to draw the U.S. in. He's just doing uh, what he wants. But you know, here you have the Ukrainian foreign minister. This is the very first immediate response on the attack or on what happened in Poland. He says, quote, Russia now promotes a conspiracy theory. It was allegedly a missile of Ukrainian air defense that fell on the Polish theory, which is not True, no one should buy pro Russian propaganda or amplify its messages. This lesson should have been long learned since the downing of MH17. Now look, he's not wrong. The Russians are liars on MH17 and have been liars for a long time. But it is on you to provide accurate information unless your aim is to draw the United States and NATO and to escalate the situation further. And unfortunately, our NATO so-called allies in the Baltics, they were very willing to jump on the same bandwagon. Let's go ahead and put this up there. Uh, here you have Slovakia. Uh, or sorry, yeah, here you have a NATO defense minister saying, quote, I am very concerned by Russian missiles dropping in Poland. Russia must explain what happened. Senseless attacks on infrastructure must stop. Russia's recklessness is getting out of hand. We will be in close contact and allies to coordinate a response. Let's go ahead and throw the next one up there because again, it just underscores. Here you have Latvia's defense minister saying, quote, Criminal Russian regime fired missiles, which target not only Ukrainian civilians, but also landed on NATO territory in Poland. And then finally, we'll go with what you said, Crystal, underscoring the Associated Press's role in all of this. Go and put this on the screen. How a lightly sourced AP story almost set off World War III. That deadly explosion uh, showed that the AP was willing to run on a single attribution source of a yep. U.S. official claiming that this was a Russian missile, only hours later to be contradicted by the President of the United States. Yep. Now, people may say, Crystal Saga, you guys are over, or you guys are exaggerating, you know, uh, oh, this it, a specific incident wasn't going to lead to World War III. I don't think that's what we're claiming at all. What we're saying is that was a real jump off point. Yeah. It could have been one of those things where it's like, okay, now we're going. What? Let's say Poland issued an ultimatum. That's ultimatums have never led to war in Europe, specifically in Eastern Europe. Uh, when over one or two people were killed, right? That's never happened before <laughs> in history. The point is, is that. Whenever you unleash that level of uncertainty and bad information, it was clear in this instance that the Ukrainians and many of the Baltic states, barring both Poland and Estonia, I'll give them credit, they never actually said it was Russia, but you had two NATO allies and Ukraine, our ostensible ally in this situation, who straight up lied uh, about what happened, or at the very least did not have complete information and put out propaganda instead to draw the United States yes. and its allies into this war. And Zelensky in spite of the fact that you now have Poland, the U.S., and NATO saying, this looks like it was Ukrainian mm -hmm. missile defense. That is very unlikely this came from Russia. There is no evidence to suggest that it did. He is sticking to his story. Yeah. I mean, he is straight out saying, no, it was not us. I you know, promise you it was not us. It was definitely Russia. So, I mean, this is an extraordinarily dangerous situation in and of itself. But I think the thing it really, really reveals is how many actors are looking for any justification mm -hmm. to try to pull us further into this conflict. And, you know, over at uh, Responsible Statecraft, they had a number of examples. So before anyone really knew what had happened here, you had prominent journalists, as you were pointing out, lawmakers jumping in to say, all right, it's time to think about Article 5. I mean, people were literally saying that at 2.10 p.m., a Ukrainian journalist with a significant following in the West tweeted, so... Article 5. Uh, she softened her comment about 20 minutes later, calling on concerned parties to wait for official information, but they say a member of Ukraine's parliament had no such compunction. The lawmaker simply tweeted out the phrase Article 5 at 2.29 p.m., adding later that Putin was, quote, testing the limits with the strikes and that reaction equals 
appeasement. Uh, another prominent American supporter of Ukraine and member of the U.S. Helsinki Commission, Paul Massaro, said around the same time that Russian terrorism had reached Poland, adding shortly after that it was, quote, hard to believe this was an accident. So when you have uh, journalists, prominent lawmakers, uh, NATO allies, all jumping to conclusions and implying we ought to be thinking about Article 5 here before you have even, you know, an hour to see any sort of confirmation of what actually happened. It just really reveals what their game is. And also with whoever this uh, U.S. official that leaked this to the AP, like clearly they're playing their own game here as well. Yeah, look, it's incredibly irresponsible. And this gets to the point where Whenever you have major national security information being confirmed on background and all this other nonsense, it needs to end as authoritative. And you know, I think all of us have to play a role in this. At this point, when you have a major international incident and you just have some rant, by the way, what does US official even mean? You know, this is what I, I used to uh, do this as well. And we had to try and take great care to describe like a senior administration official a senior White House official, a person close to Donald Trump. U.S. official could mean, you know, like a sergeant in the Pentagon, like, it, or it could mean the Secretary of State. It's one of those where we genuinely have no idea. And the fact that the AP chose to run with it, and then furthermore, that so many people in the American press who have just been agitating for escalation were willing to run with it too, without any information, without waiting for time. I mean, in a way, you can almost expect those people to do that. It is Ukraine and the defense ministers of Latvia and of Slovakia who are pretty much unforgivable here. The Ukrainian government, like, once again, I get it. You know, it is their responsibility to let out for their interests. But maybe we should learn then that their interests can diverge a little bit from our own interests. And that's part of the problem in American political discourse. If you say that, you're a Russian plant. I mean, if you're not a Russian plant for saying, yeah, I hope Ukraine wins. I hope they continue to keep up the good fight. But I don't want any part of this war in Ukraine. Same whenever you have the Latvians, you know, willing to just so clear, so immediately say criminal Russian missiles, all of that. Look, if it was, everybody would condemn it. You, nothing is hurt to the NATO countries to just wait 12 hours. And I think the polls' immediate response should be applauded here. As you said, even though they are as hawkish as they come, they were like, we're convening a National Security Council. We're gonna look at all the information. We'll let you guys know what we find. They did not leak anything about Russia, all of that. They held that. They said, maybe we'll do Article 4 if it does turn out to be Russia, uh, but we're gonna come out and have the information. The Polish president immediately called the NATO Secretary General, the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of the UK, you know, the two most powerful countries inside of NATO, and also the NATO Secretary General, and then, they all put the information out together, and then they also came up with a line where like, look, we're not blaming Ukraine, they have the right to defend themselves, it was a bad situation, it's an accident, let's clean up and go home. Well, yeah. and, and Zelensky needs to be a little careful here because, yeah. you know, he is completely dependent on the U.S. in right. particular, but uh, the, the West and NATO in general for the continued existence of his uh, administration, for economic support, and obviously for the weapons that we have been um, providing in mass quantities to him. And there's actually a, a NATO country diplomat <clears throat> who told the Financial Times, quote, this is getting ridiculous. The Ukrainians are destroying our confidence in them. Nobody is blaming Ukraine mm -hmm. and they are openly lying. This is more destructive than the missile. That is from a diplomat from a NATO country saying he is really, uh, really misstepping here and just out and out lying to try to, you know, bolster his own desire to draw countries more directly into this war. So, um, you know, he's it, it's very oh, it's a very revealing incident. That's what I'll say from the press, from some of these diplomats, from Zelensky himself, from uh, some of the countries, from some of the journalists who wanted to push an agenda that they have long had. Well, yeah, look, keep this in mind. The next time some, some ambiguous stuff pops up in Ukraine, I'm not gonna believe Zelensky. Uh, the very first thing he says, I'm gonna wait until some real information comes to line. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is 
is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.